in older adults, there's something called allostatic load. Allostatic load is the sort of physical impact of trauma over time, physical damage to your body, mental damage, whatever. We realized that, that because of allostatic load in most people, and sometimes this could show up as early as 30, right? When Johnny earlier was talking about his friends were starting to get really conservative at 30, there's reasons for that neurobiologically why that happens, but that constriction that starts to show up our challenge skills sweet spot, especially for things that we're scared about, like park skiing, it's down to like 1%. So what we realized is with this stuff, you have to go incredibly slowly. So here's what we did just with park skiing and snowboard. And then we can talk about otherwise, but we didn't teach anybody. It wasn't about learning new tricks, right? It was park riding for skiers and snowboarders. There are eight foundational movements. There is a, you have to know how to jump. You have to know how to crouch. You have to know how to slash. You have to know how to grind. You have to know how to throw a 180, a 360, and a shifty. Those are the foundational movements. Our goal wasn't to teach people how to do tricks. It was to teach them the foundational movements so that they could start with one of those they already knew how to do and could execute with zero fear and no conscious interference and build on that one micro movement at a time. So here's the other thing. Even Everybody who's ever been on skis or a snowboard, if you've made it to advanced beginner, you know how to do a hockey stop, how to turn your skis or your snowboard sideways. That Now, if I take a hockey stop and I do it on a slightly on a, on a, on a diagonal, that's a grind or a slash, depending on which way you turn your body into it. So I knew going in, myself included, but everybody else, we've all got a basic movement that we can start with. Because everybody has, you have to know how to do this to get in the gateway of the sport. So start there and build one at a time. Creativity is a flow trigger, pattern recognition. When you see a small hill on the, you're skiing through, like me, most people look at the train park and they see like the big jump and they don't notice that it's on a roller hill known as a knuckle. And you can do all kinds of tricks on the knuckle without ever leaving the ground. Or there's this, this is just shapes of snow. You can move your body in creative ways. So we wanted to teach people how to use their body in new ways with these foundational motions, because that's creativity and creativity produces pattern recognition and pattern recognition drives dopamine and dopamine drives flow and flow amplifies learning. So it was start with these really basic movements, go one at a time, do something totally safe and don't try to learn tricks. When let the flow state take care of that. Like you'll, you'll do more in the flow, right? Your job is just to creatively interpret terrain features in novel ways and like playful ways. That's the only thing people were aiming for. And we took a lot of shit out of the equation. We played follow the leader games. I would follow Ryan, I would do what he did. We didn't talk. So flow requires the prefrontal cortex to stay quiet, meaning you don't want your ego involved at all. So you don't ever wanna talk about yourself. You don't wanna talk about world events, like anything that you're scared or whatever. The R rule was we could make each other laugh, we could talk about the skiing or we could shut the fuck up. That was our rule, right? Like those were, <laughs> and when we ran the experiment, that was the rule. And I, and I will say people were shocked by it. And they, like, there was some resistance at the beginning and like we were shushing people on the chairlift. But after like two hours of it, everybody, everybody got it. Everybody was like, oh, wow, this is really important. It's the same reason, by the way, why if you're like, you don't want to check social media between tasks if you can avoid it because it like gets your emotions all stirred up and it'll break your focus and pull you out of flow. It's a bad distractor. You know what I mean? Whereas like two minutes of exercise is probably a little bit better if you just like want to break up the, the task because same reason you want to keep that prefrontal cortex turned off to keep yourself in flow if you can, especially when you're task switching. Mm -hmm.